Hi there. I am here with Vivian Heine today, who has agreed to come and share her story about what highly sensitivity means to her. So hi, Vivian. Thank you for being here. Hi, Trin. Thanks for, thanks for having me. It's um, great to be on your podcast. Well, that's settled. We're both having to be here. That's a good start. <laughs> so please tell a little bit about yourself and then we'll take it from there. Mm, sure. So um, basically, in a nutshell, I come mm -hmm. from a place of where I really struggled with shyness, introversion as part of, you know, being really sensitive from, a, mm -hmm. you know, from very little. And, and I had to learn early on to kind of function in the world. I had a really early breaking point and mm -hmm. had to turn around for myself and came to a point of really go doing the opposite of everything I was doing before. I had to force myself to go like, okay, I need to use my voice. I need to speak up. I need to, um, you know, connect with people. I need to be able to make friends and raise my hand in class, you know, to get through school and be able to hold presentations in front of a class. So that was pretty much what I did for years and years and years, which actually landed me somehow into a, a work field of being, <laughs> I'm sorry, exactly at this point, my kids are throwing a bit of a tantrum, um, but um, which got me into a field of really working in, um, you know, in an area where I always was in front of people and always had to speak and always have to um, stand up and conference presentations and workshop facilitation and things like this. And I enjoyed it, but it took me a while to figure out what was the connecting bit. And it was still quite draining at the mm. beginning. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I realized, you know what, I actually need to just be more authentic. I don't need to be someone else. I don't need to be trying to be this extroverted person when I'm not overly extroverted. Um, and just bring it back to myself and be able to bring myself in there and share stories that I really um, had this big, you know, turnaround in terms of, you know, how people responded to it. Mm. And and that essentially got me then to, you know, today really empowering other female entrepreneurs to really own their stories and stepping out, getting more confident and, and showing up as their authentic selves within their businesses. Oh, that's... I, I love how you put everything so clearly in in such a short presentation because the way you describe it is sort of how I see much of of our sort of common journey that we start out having a specific challenge or something that feels really really limiting and somehow that turns into exactly what we get to work on what we get to be good at what we find a way to to use and then from there the next step is sort of to pay it forward isn't it and to help mm -hmm. others through that same same piece we went through so exactly. that was that was really clearly and beautifully laid out but you said it was very early for you that you sort of had to to turn it around when was this and, and what was the turning point? How did you do it? Did you get any help? Yes, um, definitely. So as a child sort of growing up, I'm also an only child. Mm -hmm. So it was just me and my parents were both working. So I spent a lot of time by myself naturally, mm -hmm. but it was really not getting me the best out of me in a way. So I was naturally anyways, more withdrawn, a bit shyer need a bit more, you know, getting out of my shelf and mm -hmm. struggled at school with making friends, um, went into bullying and really started to get depression from the age of eight, probably onwards. Oh. Um, and, and yeah, really spiraling down a really unhealthy path to a point where when I was 13, I really just couldn't take it anymore. And it was really the luck of my, you know, or the, the suggestion of my grandmother uh, for me okay. my luck you know who mm -hmm. said kind of like you know there's something wrong with Vivian you should take her to my mom you know you should take her to see someone to get some professional help mm -hmm. um, just just get her checked out and my mom took me to a, a kids psychologist you know yeah. I was still yeah. under that age and 
he pretty soon into the session went to me like, well, Vivian, tell me, are you planning to take your life? And it was the first person that ever okay. asked me that. Yeah. And I was just like, yep, I do. Wow. So mm. from there on in, that was actually really the starting point of me changing because mm -hmm. after that I suddenly I wasn't allowed to be alone anymore um and I was in a a clinic you know in a psychological clinic with yeah. other kids that were between the ages of I think 10 and 14 was mm. was the age range there and really in a constant supervision you know guidance getting a lot of psychological support at that point in time so and from being um, mostly by yourself you were suddenly in a constant group of people with a lot of attention focused on you yeah yeah absolutely so it was the opposite it was the absolute opposite mm -hmm. with yeah. constantly having people around and at the beginning I found that a bit much because I do like I always as a kid need a time to myself to sort of yeah. also unwind but clearly at that point in time that time to myself was no longer an unwinding time that was a time yeah. when I would go you know into my brain and make yes. up all these terrible things yeah um, so I really needed um, that connection at that point in time and I actually mm -hmm. learned there to make friends and to be okay with people you know being around and I was also due to my nature I was pretty soon and also to my age I was pretty soon mm -hmm. also giving some exemptions like I could go to the supermarket eventually they would let me go and you know get something and stuff yeah. like that so I had the opportunity to kind of get out okay and I can come back in and I had a bit of a walk by myself you know and, and feel a lot more um, refreshed but yeah it was really it was really about making friends and making connections and being able that I could actually say something and speak up in front of people and and most of the other kids were hyperactive so I was like standing out you know like a, like um, nothing you know like a red yeah. dot there yeah um, so it was quite a shock to the system yes I was just thinking that to many of us these things happen so gradually over time we become a little bit more aware and we start to see things and we start to get a little bit better but your journey was sort of condensed and very intense in a way into a very clear sort of this was where it happened this turned things around that's that's interesting how did it sort of develop from there did it did you feel like oh now I'm this new version of myself and then upwards and onwards or was there still some processing going on or my initial yeah my initial reaction was really to almost you know disregard the old version of myself mm -hmm. and actually just be like okay this is a new me new start you know I can do this better I can you know I can talk to people I can introduce myself to new people mm -hmm. um, I can raise my hand and all of that stuff um, so I really was like very strongly focused on doing the opposite on disregarding anything yeah. that was before and I also through that I had to repeat classes as well so I was given a whole mm -hmm. new class I was like great these people don't know me I don't know them no one has bullied me here you know there's yeah. no sort of history of it so it's like great to make a new start and I did really go on this path of just you know onwards and upwards for mm -hmm. quite a long time but at the same time, you know, a lot later in my life, I realized that I wasn't just, you know, like it, it wasn't serving me to be constantly pushing myself, mm -hmm. to be constantly, mm -hmm. like it was serving me at that point in time because I needed yeah. to learn quickly new skills. Yeah. Um, but later on, like I would deplete myself, you know, run myself down, like get really exhausted and really tired because I was constantly pushing myself against sort of my natural state yeah and it wasn't until I really realized that you know it's it's okay I can take some time off I need some more time away from people mm. like I, I started when I was working eventually negotiating with my workplace that I could take um, like a day I think every fortnight or so working from home 
something yeah. like that. It was like the first one. Mm-hmm. But that was made for me a huge difference, like being able to withdraw myself from that office environment and the constant, like, you know, people surrounding yeah. was so much easier. Like I was so much more productive working from home. And that was, you know, long before COVID ever hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and quite you know quite yeah, out of the box and somehow I was always lucky with my workplaces that they mm-hmm. yes, given me that was not, and granted it yeah exactly because that wasn't that common before mm-hmm. before the whole thing so <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you um I yeah I would like to to know a little bit more about how you then sort of turn turn back again as you said you started out very very shy and then you learned these new skills that seem to serve you very well in your job and having the extrovert role and being a facilitator and doing presentations and and then tell me a little bit about how you then started to integrate the the needing time and space for yourself because it sounds to me like you found a balance now and help other people maintain that balance to be both sort of out in the world presenting themselves and and still staying authentic and true to their nature yeah absolutely i think there's a big sort of misconception out there you know that in order to be able to speak in front of people you need to be this like you know, vivacious and big, extroverted, loud person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know so many people, you know, who have amazing stories to share and amazing gifts to give and skills to share um, and who are not super extroverted or super out there, mm-hmm. right? So in one way, in my initial phase, I was sort of misguided by that same perception of like, oh, it needs to be like, you know, the super, super out there person. Yeah, yeah. So trying to fit that role. So often what I would do sort of by default, is really I'm getting myself really hyped up before a presentation mm-hmm. or before anything is. And I'm like fully running on adrenaline and like super hyped up. But then afterwards I sort of go like, yeah, everything is great. Boof, crash. You know, <laughs> like it's sort of, <laughs> and then I agree. I'm like, okay, now I need to sleep for the next two days or something like that. Um, and and just needing needing that that break button and it wasn't really by the time I was already married you know that my husband was like you know you're never even you're never just like straight you're always like pushing up and boof down and up and down you know you're like a roller coaster ride yeah anyways I was like oh I'm like okay yeah you got a point there right Mm -hmm. okay how can we how can we balance this uh, a little bit more and and it was really that that time where um for one also I realized that work um you know the conventional way of working like working Mm -hmm. for someone wasn't necessarily serving me Mm -hmm. like it was also a point of like you know if I'm trying to put boundaries in place there was always this like oh but we have these you know KPIs like key performance indicators to achieve and you need to do you need to do whatever five programs now in a week like I'm not like I love it I'm good at it but I really can't do five programs in a week, you know, and it's, it's a lot. So I was like, no, and me trying to push back was more like, well, but someone has to do it and you have to do it, you know, and this and that. I was like, when the time came and, and essentially my contract finished up and I didn't got it renewed for my last job out Mm -hmm. of many. um, And it was anyways, COVID difficult to get a new job. Yeah. you know, this doesn't, this doesn't work for me. This doesn't work for me. It's always been the same pattern. I always started a job with these hopes of, oh, this will be different if I set the boundaries, if I do that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I was still running myself into the ground. Mm-hmm. So I needed to really make that decision. I really was like, you know what? I think, I think I really need to work for myself. Like this yeah. for myself, you know, um, was just the, what felt right and the moment I started it I was just like I haven't felt those up and downs or those depleted bits because everything got to be 
on my terms. Yes. You know, if I need yes. a break, I take a break. If I feel like, oh, I've got a lot of energy, I give that energy, you know. Um, I so feel I, that. I really yeah. have been able to sort of integrate mm. it into my own business and more. Yeah. I hear, I hear that quite a lot, how sensitive people are often doing better on their own terms. And at first I had this idea that, that entrepreneurs and business owners, they had to be sort of, well, not non-sensitive, but they had to be extrovert and they had to be strong and they had to be sort of stable and they had to be all these things. And, and I realized, yeah, maybe that helps in some ways, but I think we needed more sometimes to, to be able to, to set things up the way they work for us, have our own boundaries. And as you say, sometimes there's a lot of energy and we can pour it in and there's no one to expect that we're going to do the same every week. So <laughs> we have the freedom to, to then follow follow our moods and if we have the time and space to to catch the subtle clues and sort of back up before we sort of race over the the cliff and so I I get how that would help the with the depletion so I think that's that's a really great example and inspiration of of how it's possible to create a life for ourselves that works on our terms so thank you for sharing that and now I'm curious to know what kind of change you would like to see in the world at large what do you think would be the biggest or the best change that could happen gosh so many options right apart from COVID to be finally over yes. and you know oh, everything yes. everything being back to normal yes <laughs> Is there a, a normal or is it, can, can we go back to a normal or how would you like a new normal to be maybe? I think it's a new normal, right? It's very much a new yeah. normal. And well, you know, some of the things I'm seeing these days, things that are happening also in my country particularly, it just, mm. it's hard to watch. And I find it yeah. immensely heartbreaking. And I just hope, hope, hope that somehow we get out of it and we are able to learn from this experience you know and really that people are being uplifted by it rather than you know separated segregated yes. and fighting against each other mm. so for me I think a better world would be a world where we are for once more empathic towards each other you know kinder yeah. towards yeah. each other yeah. like really listening sometimes to the other person's perspective rather than banging our opinion on top mm. of them right and really being able for me, you know, big passion is particularly around women. I work with women mainly, for women and for, for girls to really yeah. step more into their power because mm -hmm. still, you know, we say it's all equal, but really it's not. And and really for them to have the opportunity to create the lives that they want to and own their stories, you know, really shine brighter, really step up and not just be this, oh, you either have to be a mom or you can have a career or you know like it's always this like yes. two-sidedness of stuff mm -hmm. we're really going like no we can have it all we can build our own businesses own empires work the way we want to work we have you know all skills and powers and amazing talents um, that the world needs and we need to share them more absolutely yes absolutely and I think the more we find that our power, the more we own our light and our talents, I think it gives us also a confidence in a broader sense, which I think might even help with the segregation and the, and the fear-based communication we see so much of these days, because I don't think either side is has any ill intention I don't think that this side is trying to control everybody to do and, and suppress or whatever. And I don't think this side is, is harmfully selfish. I, I think both sides are afraid. So, and, and fear just does not make us pretty people. So yeah. I think the best thing to combat that or to prevent that is to 
find that place in ourselves where if we are okay as we are, it becomes easier to let other people, other people be okay the way they are. At least that's my hope. Yes, definitely. I can, I can very much see that. And it is that I think there's more, you know, masculine energy being mm. around in that peer base and that separation. Where I think exactly when when women step up more, like we're able to sort of bring that more that nurturing side to things, yeah, you know, more harmonious side and and really incorporate these more. And yeah, and and when we are, um, you know, in, with peace with mm. ourselves then it's okay to let other people be at peace as well you know then we don't have to force ourselves onto other people oh yeah I so like the sound of that I'm looking forward to a world more like that so thank you very much for that I think this is a really good place to 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 leave it hopefully yeah that we find this peace and let others have it as well so thank you so much for sharing your very powerful story. And I hope it has been an inspiration to others who find, find it hard to deal with sensitivity. But definitely there is, there is hope and there is a way to make it work for us in our own business or in whatever way it works out for us. So thanks for that. And I will put your links in the notes so people can find you if they want to know more about the way you work to help people find this, find their voice and find their path. So Definitely. Thank, you. thank you very much, Trina, for, for having me. And um, yeah, it was a beautiful interview. Thanks so much. It's been my pleasure. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>